Gettysburg has long been considered America's most haunted town. But is that true? What makes it so? With Gettysburg's hauntings and history, the reputation speaks for itself. The following are several haunted locations found in and around the town. Let's jump right in with Sachs Covered Bridge, built in 1852. This bridge witnessed both Union and Confederate troops crossing to battle and during the Confederate retreat out of town. The lore surrounding it stems from a story about three Confederate soldiers who defected from their army and were found and hung from the rafters of the bridge. Battlefield guides will tell you that this is not true, but the thing about folklore is that it just persists. Some of the most common reports of haunting activity at this bridge and around the area are strange flickering or glowing lights that have no discernible source, and shadowy figures walking along the bridge at night. Some people have even claimed to encounter a full-bodied apparition of a Confederate soldier. Devil's Den might be one of the most famous haunted locations on the battlefield itself. This place really comes to mind mostly because of how severe the fighting was in the area, between the Confederates located within these large boulders and taking cover behind them, and the Union troops up on Little Brown Top to the southeast. The valley between the two places was always seen as somewhat, not necessarily sinister, but steeped in lore. Local townspeople believed that there was a large serpent that lived within the rocks. The most common activity reported in this area is of a Texan soldier directing people where to go before disappearing. Shadowy figures darting between the rocks and the sounds of phantom cannon and gunfire are reported every year. People feel a heaviness on them or an overwhelming sadness, which honestly just makes sense in a place that witnessed this much tragedy and bloodshed. In the midst of Devil's Den. The grounds are well maintained on the battlefield in this area, and during the day it's easy to forget while the sun is out how haunted this place can become at night. There are no shortage of investigations out there, with really unnerving EVPs and phantom artillery fire within the audio recordings. All the different stories of what people describe witnessing really lends credibility to how haunted this area just might be. On and around Culp's Hill are even more reports of haunting activity, including shadow figures seen throughout the woods. Gettysburg is amazing, guys. You guys gotta come here. You gotta check this place out. Double trunks. Is that it? I think that might be it. After the battle, people described the forest in the area as being ripped apart. That there are any trees standing from that time is amazing. What's also there is rather eerie, but entirely true. I believe some witnesses to the battle actually wrote about it and wrote about the cleanup afterward. And there are apparently trenches, at least one trench of bodies around Culp's Hill. And I'm not going to try to show anybody in the public that. I'm just going to tell you that it exists. Confederate soldiers are buried around us, though. That much we know. The memorials on the battlefield came about over several decades, and sometimes they end up in some strange places. Thanks to licensed battlefield guide Fred Hawthorne, I've learned 140 things that you should know about Gettysburg that most people don't know, and one of them is right in front of me. These are two Ohio markers for the 107th and 25th divisions, right and left. And they are back here behind houses and a water treatment plant. This is unfortunate. However, these are here and this is where these men fought. Heading out into the battlefield are several preserved farms. All of these farms acted as field hospitals during the fighting July 1st through 3rd, 1863, and no exception is the George Weikert farm. During battle, the family fled the area. The house was commandeered to care for troops. 
When the Weikert family returned to their farmhouse after battle, they learned that no less than six men had died in just their parlor, let alone the rest of their house. When the soldiers were reinterred into the National Cemetery or removed to be taken south, George Weikert and his wife found their parlor carpet sliced into pieces, acting as lining for the trench graves dug around their fields. One of the most haunting farms of the field is where Daniel and Rebecca Lady lived. Behind me is the barn that acted as a field hospital. What's interesting about this place is in the farmhouse there is forensically identified blood stains in the floorboards and even finger marks against one wall. Right where a soldier was sitting against the wall with his hand out. They wanted to prove that blood stains 150 years old could be identified after that long. And this was the place where that was proven. And those blood stains are in there to this day. And in this barn is actually uh, some carvings on the wood where the Confederate soldiers were healing up. This was one of the most bloody, bloody battles of the Battle of Gettysburg. South of the house is where the temporary cemetery for soldiers were. Very bloody, very gross. Shouldn't have ended that with a smile. While this house and property are not investigated often, what has been reported there has been intense activity, EVPs, and phantom voices. What's left behind at this property may attribute something to the haunting directly, and even physical feelings of phantom touch have been reported from this place over the years. Abraham Bryan was a free black man who owned property in Gettysburg and did business through his blacksmith shop near his home. While a lot of paranormal activity is reported from inside this rebuilt home structure, the actual history of the farm and the family is fascinating. Abraham Bryan kept a blacksmith shop on this farm and was extremely prosperous with his wife and several children until several days before the battle when he and his family left town to escape incoming danger. Many, if not all, of the black families in Gettysburg heard the rumors of the Confederate cavalry arriving and left to seek shelter elsewhere before the fighting began. When Abraham and his family returned to their farm after the battle, they found it pretty much destroyed, but still standing. Crops were trampled, the fences were taken down, but they did rebuild and prospered until about the mid-1870s when Abraham moved into Gettysburg and took up work at a hotel until his death. As far as the rumors of paranormal activity, well, they might be true. Listen to this next clip, and you tell me. Getting into town, we head to the Tilly Pierce house, known for being a famous home during the time of battle because Tilly herself, or Matilda, wrote about her and her family's experience in 1888. The main people in this home during battle were Tilly's sister Margaret and her mother and father. Her father actually spent a lot of time in the garret or attic with some of the Union soldiers because they were using it as a lookout. The most haunted area of the home is said to be the Blue Room phantom voices and the feeling of someone sitting on the bed and watching you is reported from this room, along with what looks to be a ghostly soldier marching up and down the stairs to and from the attic. Tilly herself was out of town at the Jacob Weikert farm, and that's the place where she described the piles of limbs amputated from the wounded soldiers outside the basement door. How haunted that house is, however, we'll never find out. Crossing the street from Tilly's house, we go to the Bergstressers. Laura Bergstresser was a little girl about 10 who lived here during the war. She lived across from the Tilly Pierce house in this home. In 1863, she opened the window to look out into the street and a cannonball came and hit the wall of this building on the second floor right next to where she was, knocked the wall out. People in the town, if their house was hit, they kept or found a missile, a shell, and ordered it into the wall in the places where it hit to preserve it. This part of the structure was redone in 1910. It wouldn't have looked like this. This is much more going toward Art Deco Beaux Arts. So this is the original brick. It was very soon after the battle that that cannonball was stuck in the wall. It's Tilly Pierce in 1888, when her book was published, wrote about how quick people put them back in. There was a little boy, her younger brother, who had typhoid and was convalescing in another room. And he said he saw the missile come in bounce off something and roll back into the street. Nobody was hurt, but why these kids were on the second floor during battle is beyond me. To this day, 
Cannonball in the building. One of the most famous people in Gettysburg is obviously Jenny Wade, but did you know there are three homes associated with this girl? The one she was born in, up on Baltimore Street, the one she lived in during the time of battle with her mother and younger siblings on Breckenridge Street, just down the block from Miss Pierce. And it was Jenny's sister Georgia McClellan's house where Jenny passed away from the Confederate sharpshooter bullet that landed in her heart. They thought two wooden doors would be enough to stop the artillery from entering the home, and Jenny was in the wrong place at the wrong time when a bullet did. The legend behind this notorious bullet hole, however, and some of the activity that is reported from inside the home, including that of Jenny's angry father, is widely known. Heading up the block to Cemetery Hill, the Gettysburg National Cemetery was dedicated in 1863 by none other than Abraham Lincoln. And what did he say there? The Gettysburg Address. While it only lasted around two minutes, it was less of a speech and more of his brief remarks. But in those remarks, he dedicated this land to the federal soldiers who died at battle. Not quite so known is that there are at least 12 Confederate soldiers buried with these federal troops. Some are identified and some are not. This was due to confusion during the reinterment period, which for the Confederate troops buried on the battlefield where they fell was years later after the Union troops were buried here. It's just part of the history of how this process went. Next to it is the Evergreen Cemetery, which was the town cemetery for Gettysburg. Located within are Jenny Wade, of course, her boyfriend Johnston Skelly, and several other famous graves of the farm owners throughout the town. Jenny, in fact, is one of only two women to have a flag flying perpetually over her grave. Thanks for joining us in Haunted Gettysburg. Keep it weird.